A lot happened with environment, climate, and sustainability this past year. There were challenges. President Trump's decision to pull out of the Paris Climate Accord. Category 4 hurricane is the strongest to hit the U.S. in 13 years. Cape Town, South Africa could become the world's first major city to run out of water. But there were victories, too. From the United States that we are still in. Solar installations in the world are now happening here in China. The hole in the protective ozone layer of the Earth's atmosphere has shrunk. In a year of stories about natural disasters, environmental politics, and human influences, we need environmental stories that explain, translate data and science, elevate characters, make people think. The best stories inform us, can even inspire us to act. This past year, Planet Forward worked with students and schools around the world to create compelling stories about ideas, innovations, experiments that make a difference. From Alaska. My grandparents, they've hunted these same grounds we hunt. To Brazil. A nature point of view, it's just, you know, it's a place of superlatives. To Kenya. Meet Sudan. He is one of three northern white rhinos left in the entire world. To Singapore. Keep playing it forward. My name's Elaine Johnson, and this is Singapore. To Siberia. The ground is thawing. The permafrost is thawing here, and that completely changes the landscape. We need storytellers now more than ever. So find your voice. Find your story. Join us. Inspiring stories to move the planet forward. Now, please welcome your host, director of GW School of Media and Public Affairs and Planet Forward's founder, Frank Sesno. Well, good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Good, good. I am so thrilled to be here. I am so thrilled you are here. This is a, an awesome crowd. It's going to grow. We've heard from lots of people who are en route and on the way. We had more than uh, 500 people register across the two days, so you'll be seeing lots of people coming and going. So I want to thank you as we get started. And I think you're going to find um, a great amount of inspiration, ideas, um, originality, creativity, information, uh, across these next couple of days. I want to welcome you to the George Washington University. This is our School of Media and Public Affairs, the Jack Morton Auditorium, and to our 2018 Planet Forward Summit. Um, we really are gathered at a great moment of churn and challenge in this country. Um, we are divided, polarized on so many issues, and in case you hadn't noticed, you are in a place called Washington, D.C., which just might contribute to this a little bit. Um, there is uh, misinformation and disinformation out there, um, undermining facts, undermining evidence, undermining science. Not a good thing. Social media sort of serves as the jet fuel for a lot of this stuff, for conspiracy theories and vast hidden data breaches, as you probably heard just recently, that um, are even greater than we thought, that can turn information into weapons to distract and divide us. Um, Yes, the current administration here in Washington has changed direction uh, and is walking away from uh, the Paris Climate Accord and is um, walking away from regulations meant to hasten a shift, for example, to renewable energy. Which brings us to why we're here and to why all of you are here. More than ever, as you just heard and as you've seen, um, we need to find new ways to communicate and to connect, to reach and teach and tell stories to compel um, public audiences um, on science and sustainability and everything in between, and to get them to understand what you're doing and why. And it doesn't matter whether you're a journalist or a filmmaker or a CEO or a scientist or a business student or anything. You will simply do better if you can communicate clearly and compellingly, if you can tell stories that help people say, aha, I get it, you're right. I get it. I don't agree, but I get it. 
So that's what we're going to do over these next couple of days. We're going to look at how we can communicate, how we tell stories to connect fact, data, ideas, and innovations to make them not just informative, but fascinating. And a lot of you have already done it, our Planet Forward correspondents and others, and I'm going to make some introductions in just a minute. Um, we want this to be an incomparable conversation for you folks over the next couple of days. So uh, as I said at the reception last night, for those of you who are there, do not be shy. You are not allowed to be shy. You must walk up to a stranger and say, hey, you're a stranger. What's your name? What do you do? <laughs> Tell me about that. How can I learn from you? Um, and for those students, how many students in the room? Raise your hands. OK. For those of you, tr repeat after me. Have you got a job for me? OK. <laughs> Have you got an internship for me, all right? Be bold. It starts right here and today. Uh, one of my favorite things at these summits, uh, before we get going, is to have a little shout out thing, like what schools are you from, right? So let's start with that. Who, who wants to start? What school are you guys from? Eckerd College. Eckerd College. Where else? Loyola University of Chicago. Loy Loyola University Chicago. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Did you bring the 98-year-old nun with you? <laughs> OK, OK. Where else? University of Minnesota. University of Minnesota. Colorado State. Colorado State. SUNY Plattsburgh. SUNY Plattsburgh. Columbia. Columbia. GW. 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 That's good. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting a little nervous there. Anybody over here who didn't get a shout? Middlebury. Middlebury. I like Middlebury. I went there. You guys are OK. University of Wisconsin? All right. How about over on this side? University of Arizona. Fair game! <laughs> All right. Ole Miss. Ole Miss. Awesome. <laughs> SUNY ESF. What does ESF stand for? Environmental Science Board. Thank you. How many people are here today from SUNY ESF? <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. They tell us more than 30 students from SUNY and, and faculty from SUNY ESF. Where else? Jackson State. Jackson State. Hooray. All right. Where else? Iowa State. Iowa State. Penn State. Penn State. Purdue. Purdue. Yale and U.S. College. What? Yale and U.S. Yale and U.S. What does N.U.S. stand for? National University of Singapore. She's come from Singapore to be with wow. us today. All right. Awesome. OK. Who else? UVA. UVA. Anybody else? Any unsung schools? Huh? What? University of Arkansas. University of Arkansas. So we have. Guys, we have students from 40 schools with us here today, all together, uh, over these next two days. So can you all give one another a big hand, and let's get it going right. <laughs> a couple of other recognitions before we get going with the program. Planet Forward correspondents. We have 15 Planet Forward correspondents at campuses and universe, on colleges and university campuses across the country. They work closely. Anybody can put a story on Planet Forward, but they work very, very closely with our editor. Uh, and they file four stories a year. We work with them. Can my Planet Forward correspondents all please stand so we can see where you are? One, two, three. All right. And you'll hear from them. You'll hear from them uh, throughout the two days as to what they've done. You'll see some of their work, and several of them are finalists in our StoryFest prize. Um, I also want to recognize the Planet Forward Advisory Board. We have awesome people on the Planet Forward Advisory Board. Could you guys please stand up so everybody can see? And say hi. All right. So wait, stay standing because one, what did I say? I said, right, go up to them and ask them for a job. <laughs> so Francesco, introduce yourself, where you're from, what you do. Francesco Candela, Director of Communications for Space Called the International Research Institute of Highly Described Astronomy. Bruce. Uh, Bruce Branson, former publisher of Scientific American, uh, consultant to Nudu Company. Jim. Board chair. Board chair. Board chair. Very important man. I have to be really nice to him <laughs> all the time. Yeah, Jim Beisler, I'm at the University of Arizona School of Natural Resources and the Environment for a professor. <laughs> Betty. Betty Hudson, former chief communications officer, National Geographic Society, now unemployed, but no people. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, does she know people. <laughs> Repeat after me. Betty, can you connect me to <laughs> Quentin? Quentin Wheeler, president. Lydia. Lydia Bass and Land O'Lake. I run the foundation and our community work. So a big hand for them. Thank you guys very much. We, we would not be here with, without them. 
So we're going to be engaging over the next uh, couple of days. You're going to be engaging over the next couple of days with astonishing people and our networking breaks here on the stage, at lunch, and beyond. And I really do encourage you to um, not be bashful and to, and to go up and introduce yourself and just start a conversation. It's so much of what we're all about. We'll have fascinating breakouts this afternoon after our lunch. Tomorrow, you're going to meet a National Geographic Explorer. You're going to participate in a phenomenal town hall um, where you will engage with a Roosevelt, an Eisenhower, and two presidents. Seriously. Uh, and then after that, and based on a lot of what you've heard here over these couple of days and at that town hall, you're going to pitch your ideas, and we're going to story ideas, and we're going to write those down, and we are going to pursue several of those in our reporting next year for our Planet Forward correspondence. So we're going to be able to take what you're getting here and learning here and, and ideas you've got and actually act on them. Um, we're also going to announce the Planet Forward Story Fest winners. Um, where are the Story Fest finalists? Okay. Awesome. All right, so we will have our categories, best storytelling around character, best storytelling around data and science, best storytelling around an innovative idea, best big idea, most creative storytelling, the GW Prize. And the winners will be going to Alaska this summer with us on a storytelling expedition, courtesy of Lindblad Expeditions. Where is Lindblad? Where's Amy? Say, say hi to Amy. Hi, hi Amy. <laughs> So Amy Burquist, and you're going to meet Sven Lindblad. Sven is on his way. He will be our luncheon speaker from Lindblad Expeditions. And Lindblad Expeditions has unbelievably and graciously um, allowed us to uh, join them aboard the National Geographic Sea Lion. We will sail out of Sitka, Alaska. We will end up in Juneau, Alaska for seven days. Our winners will be sailing with naturalists and scientists and getting story ideas and doing stories along the way. Um, and you'll get to know Sven at lunch and why he's doing this and he, how he and why he believes in story. You're also going to get to know Dr. Imani Cheers. Where is Imani Cheers? Stand up so people can see you, because they're going to get to know you. So Dr. Cheers is my colleague here, I'm fortunate enough to say, at the School of Media and Public Affairs. She's also um, spent time with Land Lakes as uh, part of the Global Food Challenge program that Land Lakes sponsors. She's traveled with Planet Forward students and helped them do storytelling, most recently to Belize. She'll be coming with us to Alaska, and she will aboard ship be helping to teach digital editing and storytelling, um, sort of storytelling for your iPad, and um, pretty amazing stuff. Very quick housekeep housekeeping uh, uh, work here. We'll have networking breaks, second floor, coffee, other things, get to know one another, lunch. Our panelists and advisory board members and others will be at tables. They will be helping to get to know you, but also to lead a little bit of a discussion. Um, each uh, table has a host to do that. To confirm your lunch ticket, you must have checked in at the um, registration desk. So if you haven't done that, do it. Sven Lindblad, as I mentioned, will be our storyteller uh, over lunch. So he and I will engage. Take in the displays and engagements on the first floor. We'll have a Planet Forward Opportunities table. Um, has all kinds of things, and I'll talk more about that later. Second floor, watch your story fest entries. that will be on a loop through the monitor there. Take pictures upstairs. We have a little booth. And share that on our foam board questions. Um, you, got, you have foam board questions. You'll see, you know, how are you going to move the planet forward? Put some things down. We'll pull that. Um, and tell our story with our hashtag, right? So we've got PF Summit 18. Um, where did they go? PF Summit 18, Planet FWD, and Story Fest 2018. So let's make some noise. Um, if you need a reminder, you can check that out on the front of your programs. Wi-Fi instructions are there as well. Um, I want to thank Team Planet Forward and everybody in a green shirt. They're here to help you throughout the next couple of days. So if you have any questions, ask them. But in particular, um, Hannah. Where is Hannah, Dale? Hi. Hannah's back there. Say hi to Hannah, everybody. Some of you may know her already. Uh, Kim Ossie. Kim is our uh, managing editor. Where is Kim? Not in the room? Working. Working. OK. <laughs> And Dan Reed, where's Dan? Working right here. Working right here. So get to know them and, and, and spend time with them. Um, I also want to thank Laura, Morris, uh, Chandra, Jack, Emily, and all of the students, lots of students, student volunteers and interns, several from other schools, um, who've helped put this together and are volunteering today. Um, as I said, we're going to get going here. But very, very heartfelt thanks now uh, to our sponsors and our funders um, who've made this possible. Our title sponsors, Blanda Lakes, Lindblad Expeditions, Alaska Airlines. Alaska Airlines is providing air travel for our winners from all over the country 
to get to Alaska this summer. So thanks to Alaska Airlines. Discovery um, and Monsanto, George Washington University from the School of Media and Public Affairs, the Office of the President, the GW Sustainability Collaborative and the Office of Sustainability. We have presenting sponsors, World Food Program USA and Vimlandra Sharon is with us from, uh, I'm sorry, from uh, UNFAO. UNFAO is another one of our sponsors and you'll be hearing about what we're doing with UNFAO. And if some of you want to travel to Rome with us in the fall, we'll tell you about that. Sweet Green, Skanska, National Geographic and Mrs. Green's World. Where's Mrs. Green? <laughs> Okay, Mrs. She is, she is so bashful, Mrs. Green. I'm, she is. I'm on your not being shy, Frank. I'm listening. Okay, <laughs> and she's got an amazing podcast and video project that she's working on, and I'm sure you will hear from her. Okay, let's get going. We started StoryFest back in 2015, prize because we wanted to reward great student storytelling and connect it with on-the-ground learning and take people on our expeditions, our storytelling expeditions. And in fact, as you saw in the early video, we've taken students all over the world. Last year, uh, student StoryFest winners from six different schools went to the Amazon um, on this storytelling expedition with Dr. Tom Lovejoy, a world-renowned conservationist, ecologist, National Geographic explorer, and also known as the godfather of biodiversity. Um, we slept in hammocks. We witnessed field research. And everybody, most everybody, avoided scorpion stings. <laughs> except me. Um, it hurts. <laughs> uh, we have several of the students who went with us uh, who, today. Uh, Carrick Palmer, Zach Smith, and Harrison. Where are you guys? There's Carrick. Where's Zach? Where? <laughs> He's backstage. Is Harrison here? He's over there too. Okay, so where's Zach? Hi, Zach. <laughs> so you'll be hearing from these guys a little bit later. Our students told the story. They saw the story of the Amazon and they told it in words. I want to show you something now. One from Jamie Dittmar from the University of Montana. Unfortunately, she could not be with us today took our breath away with what she did. Her videography, her editing, her use of information and character are woven masterfully, as you'll see. It's a slice from our trip last year to the Amazon. It's about three minutes. Enjoy it. How do we actually protect the biology of a living planet? so that it's there hundreds and thousands of years from now. Let's stop thinking about nature as some little patch of protected area in the middle of a human-dominated system. Let's start thinking about human aspiration embedded in natural landscapes. So we're at Camp 41, which is, to my mind, the best of the research camps we have here in the heart of the Amazon. And that's because it's virtually unbroken forest from here all the way to the Guianas, essentially the forest primeval. Biological diversity is the priority in how I look at the whole picture. It's incontrovertibly led to a priority in protecting large areas and connecting small areas that are now isolated. And just to sum it up with a single example from this project, 100 hectares of forest. If it's a fragment, it loses half of the species of the birds of the forest in less than 15 years. So you may have a forest but it doesn't have all the things that it had originally. So what this means is if you want to have all that diversity in the Amazon basin, you actually need to manage it as a system so that it can generate the rainfall that's essential to have a rainforest. Moisture gets returned to the moving air mass 
through evaporation of the complex surfaces of the forest and through the action of transpiration through the leaves. That process repeats itself five or six times until finally it gets the, to the high wall of the Andes and the air mass moves up and most of that moisture drops out in, in a tremendous amount of rain and creates essentially the 20% of the world's river water that is the Amazon system. But it's not just about science here, it's also about building the next generation of scientists. There is no better classroom than the reality of being in the heart of the living planet. And they get it. Pretty amazing, huh? Will you join me in welcoming Tom Lovejoy? Tom. Thank you so much for being yeah. here. What'd you think of that? It's pretty fabulous. It's the first know, time you saw that, right? First time I saw it. I, I want to use it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jamie Dittmar is a student from the University of Montana, as I said, who has been studying documentary filmmaking. Her use of drones, I thought, was especially effective, those big, beautiful, wide shots. Yeah, it's the first time I've seen Camp 41 from the air. Is that right? Right. Um, you took us down there last year, and Scorpion accepted. Uh, <laughs> and we had a great time. Um, I was sort of hoping that Scorpion would be here. <laughs> Thanks. I think you're responsible for that, actually. So I got stung on my finger. Where's Carrick? <coughs> Carrick here? Carrick looked after me. Carrick and, and Mark Lichtenstein, they sat me down and they watched me for about two and a half hours to make sure I wasn't going to just disappear, because uh, it really did hurt. Um, but you took us down there and, and the students down there <coughs> um, and you, to lead this. Why? Why did you feel it was so important for us to come and see this with our own eyes? Because, you know, short of stories and storytelling, which come from doing that, uh, there's nothing like experiencing it yourself, personally, and just being part of the living planet. Tom, just share with the, the audience for a minute um, how long you've been going there and um, immodestly <laughs> the influence that you've had in preserving so much of, of that Amazon. So I, I first went in 1965 as a graduate student and actually, the first day in the forest, I was thinking, what's the big deal? <laughs> I didn't see anything other than trees, right? Uh, but that's the essence of the forest. And so I ended up doing my PhD in the Amazon and then going back when I was at the World Wildlife Fund, uh, working on its conservation, but also exploring the science of habitat fragmentation which had not been actually understood to be the big conservation issue that it is. You know what habitat fragmentation is? <laughs> yes, everybody know? You on saw it on the screen. Well, you take it. That's right. So, <clears throat> but this has not just been an exercise in doing science. Uh, it's been an exercise in trying to understand the Amazon as a whole, try and expose people to the same kind of thing the students had last summer. <clears throat> and they always go off understanding that the planet actually works not just as a physical system, but a linked biological and physical system. And that we have to treat it that way. We have to manage ourselves to respect that system. Uh, and there's nothing like the living experience uh, to get that across. Second best is great stories like we just saw. And you established Camp 41 when? That probably got started in the late 70s. Called 41 because? It's 41 kilometers from the highway. <laughs> the way Very back. original. And you had some amazing visitors there. Who are some of the folks you've, you've, you've entertained and exposed to Camp 41? Well, we had Olivia Newton-John, um, Tom Cruise, 
Al Gore. And let me tell you, he really snores. <laughs> <laughs> There's another story there that we'll avoid, I think. <laughs> so, you know, and there was uh, Senator John Hines, then Senator from Pennsylvania, was on that trip. And he simply denied that he snored. He said he was communicating with the howler monkeys. <laughs> The Howler Monkeys are really, really incredible. Um, Carrick, can I call you out on this uh, for, for going down there? Carrick uh, told his stories through photography. Um, and he did a, and if you go and go online, you can see some of what the, 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 the Camp 41 looked like. But Carrick, what did that trip mean for you, and what were you photographing? Uh, I mean, it was, I don't think Tom could have put it any better that <clears throat> it is a place of superlatives. and. It's, it's, I, I still struggle to find words to describe it. I mean, in, in looking at these pictures, bring back incredible memories. And while I was there, I was spending a lot of time photographing the animals, ended up spending, wanted to photograph birds, but as Tom said, most of the time you just see the trees. So I ended up photographing insects a lot and a lot of dragonflies that were just amazing. And what are you gonna do with all of this? What are you hoping to put together for a career for yourself? It's a good question. <laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> All right, Carrick, thanks. Tom, last thing, um, your bottom line story uh, of the Amazon, how is it doing? Are we heading towards um, a happy ending, or is the, sp the suspense and the mystery of this drama still playing out? Well, the drama's still playing out, but uh, a vision of a successful end is out there. Which is? Uh, which is actually managing it as a system, uh, making sure that there's enough forest that it can continue to make all that rain uh, and actually support itself over time. I want to thank you for making yourself. Tom was so generous with his time. I mean, the students who went last year on this trip were led by literally one of the world's foremost uh, experts in biodiversity who has been a pioneer and a champion of this space and has done more than he has told you here to make sure that, what is it now, nearly 50% of the Amazon altogether is protected at some level well, or another? At the moment, 50, but we need more than 80. We need more than 80, yeah. but it's there we're where we are partly because yeah. of you, Tom. So thank you so and much. And it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Still is. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.